Well, hello everyone and welcome to another Fish Talk video. We're back in our happy place. I'm with Jamie over here. Evening yeah. or afternoon, fellas. <laughs> well, we think it's morning, but... Well, uh, no, it is too. It's a bit hard to see, as, uh, as you can see there. We've, uh, we've got a lot of fog to start the day. Seven or eight uh, trailers at the boat ramp, Jamie? Uh, ten, including us. Ten, yeah. Okay, so uh, a lot of locals around, that's good. Clearly, and yeah. you usually see us wearing these when we're uh, up here in the summer months to keep the sunshine off. Yeah, well that's true, and uh, yeah, sort of feel like the Kelly gang to a certain degree, don't we? Well. But anyway, today we're going to be doing a bit of uh, trolling as we often do here at uh, Dartmouth. We thought we'd start off with uh, worms and fenders and Crick hoppers, uh, we're in the eight mile at the moment, if people know where that is. And along the way today, we might just show you how we set up our uh, downriggers. Jamie, I've been getting uh, some requests just to all right, just yep. to show the basics of downrigging. So uh, we if, can do that if we can think about it well, during the day. We'll do that. Very good. So anyway, hopefully the next time uh, we turn this contraption on, it'll be to show you a fish coming in. Be good. Thanks, folks. Giving Jamie a bit of an advantage here. So. Two lines to one, but he needs that sometimes. <laughs> what say you, sir? That's not fair, Roscoe. It's <laughs> just that I'm more efficient. I'm driving the boat. There's a touch on that one. Ooh, on the lead line. Already. Yeah, just one touch, just then. Okay, yep, yep. there you are, you're on. Hopefully we've got that on the... So that was on the worm, Roscoe? Yep. And that was about five minutes after setting, maybe less. Well, less, because I've got I've got two rods out. That's why you've got one. Yeah. Well, see, this this is the problem. I've got a net for you. I've got to drive the boat. I hey hey hey! I've been driving the boat and setting the rods, and I've got two out. You've just been puddling around <sighs> again. I don't think he's a big fish, Roscoe. I don't think he is either. But I'll get the net ready anyway. It's here just in case. Uh, in the area that Mandy and I got fish in last time, so again, probably going back to that idea that where the fish are feeding, or where there's food source, that's where you'll find the fish, Roscoe, which we've we've set on our tips and things like that. Yeah, you try indeed. and find the food source, and when you do, sort of stick in that area. And that's right. We'll go backwards and forwards across this area for a while now because we know there's fish already here. Yep. Um, and now we're showing a leader material, so he's not going to be too far back. But he doesn't look like he's going to set any world records. Oh no, not by any stretch of the imagination. But, uh, Staying deep. There you go, I'll let you do that. Okay. First fish in the boat. So that would be five minutes maximum from, yeah. from setting up and they're standard fare at the moment up here roscoe they're not huge fish but no. in ripping condition and you'll see when we open him up because he'll come home yep um beautiful uh bright orange flesh yep he's taken the worm well down because you can see a bit of blood on his gills there so he's in a lot of trouble anyway so okay it's probably the right thing to do is dong him beautiful color on the inside roscoe mm -hmm. and Little remnants of eggs there. Well, starts of new ones, so female. But you can see the stuff that's just coming out of its guts is um, is yeah, Daphnia. It looks like slime, folks, but it's actually a little water flea. Yeah, which gives the good coloration. Yep. And they do really well on it. It's actually a small crustacean, Jamie. It is. So that's why the flesh up here looks more salmon-like than it might in, say, Lake Hume. Fog's not going to lift in a hurry if this, uh, with no wind here, Jamie. So, I'd rather uh, than no wind, Roscoe. Oh yeah, yeah, the fog's okay. We've got an uncanny sense of direction, so uh, we'll be fine. Uh, there's also a GPS on the, uh, <laughs> on the sounder, so we will well, be fine. Roscoe's on. We think. We think, yeah. Certainly we, had a good hit. Certainly got a hit, but uh, I'm not feeling anything at the moment, mate, unfortunately. No, he's, he's gone. Well, still 1 0 to the good guys, but yeah. Ross will cut that out. <laughs> and often happens, Roscoe. You, you, got a, you got every bit of that. You got a good bit of that, didn't he? Yep. Yeah. Without the pointy bit. No, unfortunately. Oh, well. 
Them's the brakes. I'll call that on the board. Yeah, yeah, well, you're not. <laughs> You'll call that having a hit. <laughs> so if we went back to our old scoring system. Hey, camera. <laughs> if we went back to our old scoring system. That's worth a point in our old scoring system. That is exactly all that It's that not is a worth. goal. We, we do have a, a goals and points scoring system. On one, but we got rid of that because I just kept on winning all the time. Actually, we... Um, it was we, like North Melbourne playing Collingwood. It was... That's not true. <laughs> that is not true. The beauty of these masks is nobody can see if I'm poking me tuggy at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, liar, liar, pants on fire. But yeah, that's why you've got to watch them. And sometimes better on the lead line than on the uh, downrigger, Ross, because you can miss that. Yeah. And if you do miss that and you're trolling along, yeah. uh, you're trolling along for a long time with no bait because they won't take that. No, they won't. And, uh, and you're right. You do have to have an eye on, on your uh, rods pretty well all the time and Jamie if, or if you haven't them. had anything for 15 to 20 minutes bring it in and give it a look yeah have a check okay back out there see what happens so when you're setting this Roscoe don't have the lure too far down depending upon how deep you're going so yeah we were, you've got around about 10 meters back there Jamie or maybe if that yeah it might not be I'm just thinking how far you were able to kick when you were playing footy that's all that's a mark in my <laughs> estimations. Right here. So Jamie's just letting that down. This is a Scotty downrigger. They're very easy to set. Then he just tightens up his drag a bit there. Get the rod tip arced over a bit. And you've still got drag. Yeah. There's there's a little bit of an art to uh, setting it in the clip. You know, you don't want it in so tight that it won't ping at all, but you don't want it so loose that you get it all the way down there, and then you've got to bring it all back in again and start again. Yeah, so and that's a pain in the bum. That is, indeed. Unless you've got an electric one that does it all for you. But yeah, we that's don't true. Have that. Right, Jamie, back on. Better fish, too. Yeah. Well, it feels a better fish, Ross. Yeah, not real big, Roscoe. Uh, see, I called it as a better fish. You did call it as a better fish. Yeah, but... well, it's, it's doing a bit more than the last one did, but I don't know that it's any better. In okay. fact, I'm reasonably confident it's smaller and he'll uh, be going back. Yeah, no, he doesn't look huge. Okay, just look at him. Yeah, I think uh, he's going back. So another little brown folks, I'll just play around with the motor here again, turn us a bit more to the right. Just nip through the very front of the cheek, or the bottom uh, yep. of the jaw. Holding them upside down works, doesn't it too? Oh yeah, yeah, it helps pacify them. Calms them down. A, it's a really good way, especially if you don't want to keep the fish, you know, if you, you want it to be as untraumatised as possible, shall we say. We try to be good guys sometimes, Jamie. Oh, we are good guys, but it's 2 0 now, Roscoe. All right, Ross is on over there. We've got a double hookup. And mate. I'm on here. Just trolled past the. Well, hopefully, I can get mine in a bit before yours. I think mine came on first. Maybe sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've probably dropped yours. Not very big, mate. Not very big. Only a baby. Only a baby. So I'll get in and uh, then I can... Oh, you're on the board now though, mate. Yeah. Just yeah. came past those trees you can see in the distance there. There he is. One for the... Radio. I'll take that off you. He's that little. He's gone. Oh, so that's... That's a point. One from the goal square each <laughs> that we've missed. Oh well, oh. never mind. Hey, this is our uh, yeah. ultra bite. Secret goop. We don't go anywhere without it these days. And as I said in the last video, very hard to find. So we've got ourselves a dozen bottles or so and we're guarding it very, very jealously. It's uh, in a more prominent place in the house than the red wine is, Roscoe. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, Jamie's now uh, setting up. This is a, a pinch, I don't know, what do you call that sort of? A really? pinch clip. Pinch clip, yeah. So I got that in there. Um, Only about 
Oh, uh, maybe a quarter of the way in, Roscoe. Yeah. You, you really want it to ping on its own if it, if you can, because that'll be enough to set the hook normally. And you just sit like that. Yeah. <laughs> Where about? behind the bomb there. It's about oh, 15 metres behind the boat. Yep. I'm going to go down to 24 feet in depth. Yep. Um, so the Scotty Downrigger has... Scored off. The Scotty Downrigger has a uh, timer there yeah. or a counter on the top. So that's what it would normally be set like, pull up. Yep. And just back your drag off. The beauty of doing it with an overhead reel is you don't get the twist in your line no. that you can get from a thread line. Sit him in there. On this one, you have to hold the thing off, wind it down to your depth that you want it. The uh, barrel gives you a wind of around about one foot per, per wind. Oh, I've just had a fish knock off at 24 feet, so I go, uh, 22, sorry, so I go back to that. Yep. And then we just tighten up, tighten up the drag first. Yep. Get the, get the tip down and uh, you're set and you're ready to go. And you always make sure that there's a bit of drag left in your, on your thing. Generally, we very rarely get these two downriggers crossing each other. It's usually got to be a pretty horrible windy day for that to happen. Yep. Or we've got to have stopped. And we said that in a, a previous video too, Jamie, that if you can keep going, it's a good idea. Yeah. As you can see, the fog has lifted very quickly. It's, it's gone completely. Yeah, nothing. Uh, from, nothing. from right around. I'll get up and have a look. As you can see, it's just one beautiful day on glorious Lake Dartmouth.